and I can share links with them. Yep. All right, so I think we're live. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to Women's Public Leadership Network's WPLN's Facebook Live discussion today. Um, my name is Maureen McNerney. I'm our Director of Development, and I'm joined by Erica Arbetter of Google, who's going to talk through how to keep yourself and your campaign secure online. Um, so Erica currently serves as the Civics Outreach Manager at Google, where she works on developing the company's outreach training program for political entities, as well as efforts that help people engage with elections around the world through Google products. Most recently, Erica served as Digital Director for the American Action Network and Congressional Leadership Fund. She's also served as the Digital Director for the House Committees on Ways and Means and Natural Resources on Capitol Hill. Prior to her work in government, Erica worked at a political consulting firm where she developed and implemented digital strategy for a variety of organizations, candidates, elected officials, and Fortune 500 companies. So we are so thankful to be joined by you, Erica, today. Um, welcome to our Facebook Live. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, to get right into it, you know, digital security and just the evolving digital landscape is something that can be so overwhelming, I think, for individuals and especially starting up a political organization. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about how Google plays a role in keeping information safe for high risk users like candidates and their campaign staff? For sure. I would say um, the biggest way that Google plays a role in this space is that we know a lot of campaigns and candidates are either using Workspace, so using G Suite, using our platform, or we. There, it's a very fluid process from being a personal individual to becoming a candidate, really entering that arena. So you might have a lot of that data on your personal Gmail. Um, so what we have created is the advanced protection program. And that's for users that may have a higher risk of targeted online attacks like campaign teams. Um, and that, that advanced protection program really leverages uh, phishing resistant technology of security keys, which I'm sure we will cover today. And it really provides industry leading security to protect users across the many ways attackers will try to access your account, whether that's through a sign-in page, through malware, if it's emailed to you, um, and or, or phishing email, should you receive it, anything along those lines. Um, the advanced protection program is free and it really only requires a security key. But um, beyond that, I would say that there are built-in protections and additional features that this audience can use and that's um, for any user. So whether you're thinking about becoming a candidate or um, you're working on a campaign or you're volunteering, emailing with people who might be targeted. Um, we have the security checkup, and that is a step-by-step -step tool, helps protect the security across your Google account with really personalized recommendations. You can manage which third-party apps um, ha have access to your account data, check any of your saved passwords, and it also shows you any recent security events in the last 28 days. So. All of that is available at g.co slash security checkup. And we recommend that users, especially highly targeted users, look at that about once a month. Yeah, that's great to know. And a great reminder for myself and anyone watching to go in as soon as this conversation is over and do that security checkup. Um, our recent election cycles have also made it clear that um, you know, protecting our online data is important, but we're working more than ever with remote and distributed and on the go teams um, that are utilizing a bunch of different technology or multiple devices. Um, so even as we're spreading out more across the country and the globe without the conventional security protections of an office necessarily, um, how can we ensure that our information is protected across buildings, cities, teams, and, and globally? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I would say this is a two-pronged answer. The first is pretty Google specific, and that would be if you are using Google Drive, which we know, especially in this new, like very virtual world of um, work from home and collaborating across states, um, cities, et cetera, I would say knowing how to manage those permissions 
So if you have a, politics and campaigns are so transient. So as staffers join and leave, making sure that you know um, who has access to drive documents, um, regularly checking the security and the access levels across the staff. Um, that's going to be a really, really important now more than ever. And then the second one is more general advice, and that's backing up important files. Um, in previous election cycles, the advice was really to back up everything all the time, have a, um, like a hard drive, a physical one, I'm sure anybody who's kind of worked in technology in any capacity is familiar with what those look like. Um, but with the cloud, that advice has really, and the guidance has changed. So now not everything needs to be backed up all the time. I would identify uh, what is most important if it's if it's unimportant personal potentially embarrassing content on your phone or in your email make sure that's encrypted um but identify the most important files the ones that you would need access to if something were to happen and um, put those on the cloud but otherwise if it's unimportant if it's personal um, make sure that's encrypted and then the other thing is that if it's not going to be relevant or it can be taken out of context, um, read it, delete it. Somebody sends you a joke, a meme, something that's especially relevant for that news cycle but might change if it's leaked or accessed in another week or another month. Um, appreciate the joke. Everybody can see a photo or whatever. And then just delete it. Make sure you empty out your trash. That is the best advice. Um, don't back up everything all the time. Make sure the important documents, the schedule, the donor information, all of that, that's on the cloud. It, password protected. Um, make sure it's in confidential mode. That's a feature that Google offers to all users. Um, but the guidance is really encrypt the personal information and delete the stuff that is just going to be... Um, Nothing that you would want on the you know front page of the newspaper if it's going to be taken out of context or something along those lines. Yeah, absolutely. So that confidential mode you you mentioned is that available across all Google products um, within Gmail, within GChat, etc. So confidential mode on Gmail is it creates and basically um, makes your the email that you're sending. The user cannot print it. They cannot copy and paste from it. The recipient, they can't forward it. I mean, yes, of course, I can't stop anybody from taking a photo of their screen, um, but it really does protect you in that sense. So these eyes are not coming, um, are not getting on your documents or your, your email that you're sending. Um, beyond that, within Drive and, and Docs and Slides and all that, we have the feature where you can, it's the same. Um, you can go in, let me just pull up one right now so I can see. What you can do is um, change the permissions. So if you are going to go to share, um, what you would do is Restrict access. I'm just looking how to do this. Viewers and commenters can see options to download, print, and copy. You would uncheck that. Okay. So um, it's just an extra layer of protection. Confidential mode is for Gmail. And then restricting access or making sure that somebody needs a password or something, um, or only users, specific users can see a document, that's going to be within Drive. I think that's great piece of advice. And everyone that hasn't explored these features, please go into your own Google products um, and take a look. Because as a lot of us learned, as we moved to Zoom and other in Google Meet and other online video platforms, I think the, the default now is disable screen sharing, which a lot of people learn the hard way. And we should probably set our defaults on these other online tools um, to reflect those best practices as well. If you want to open up more features for certain trusted individuals after the fact, do so. But I think it's great to sort of start with a secure set of defaults um, that Erica just sort of outlined for us. And I can always send you um, additional 
like guidance and I can send the help centers around that. So users don't have to just like remember what I'm saying right now. Well, yeah. any years. Absolutely. Um, so major data breaches can even start with a simple human error, um, like clicking on a wrong link within a phishing email. Um, can you share some tips around, um, you know, for candidates, electeds, and their teams to recognize and avoid these phishing emails? I mean, they're getting so much more sophisticated and persistent every day. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say, I taking a step back, what's most important for users in this space to know is that phishing, it's in general, um, Obviously, the main goal is to get into your accounts, access your information, um, anything that's really looking to trick you to reveal your personal information. Um, I would say the way we hear about it a lot is within financial institutions or supply chain. Um, in this space, phishing is often not financially motivated. It's really about the disruption of power. And that's what's most important. So it's it has malicious intent. It's either a hacktivist or a state-sponsored attack. Um, and by not being vigilant of these phishing attempts that are oftentimes very targeted, it's not just a broad, let me see what I can get from anybody. It's they're very much targeting you because of the space you're in, what your platform says, et cetera. Um, so you really do put not only yourself, but your broader organization at risk by not being vigilant and paying that extra level of attention. Um, so to your original question, how do you identify it? Um, the three simple checks that I would just recommend across the board. So the first is making, who is the sender? And you're gonna wanna make sure, and this is something that we've seen time and time and time again, somebody will take um, a send, like a donor's name or a, a campaign, employee's name, and that's really publicly available because those all have to be disclosed um, through either the FEC or through state and, and local election filing. So what they can do is they'll take, you know, Susie Johnson, make it Susie Johnson 2022 at gmail.com and email you and make it look exactly like her name. Obviously, it's not that hard to find that a donor's employment information, they'll duplicate their signature, and you're, you're not going to go and look to make sure that, oh, maybe the I is a one or something, um, or an L or something. So it says, hi, you know, haven't chatted with you in a while, or hey, it's Susie. Um, I'm looking at doing a campaign event. I want to hand out a bunch of gift cards to all the volunteers. Um, can you send me gift cards? Or, hey, um, I'm hosting a fundraiser or some, I'm looking at doing this or this or this. Can you send me the information for that bank account? Whatever it is, it's actually been very, very successful um, of a spoof. And then it's not hard to create a new Gmail account. So what you're going to want to do is make sure that you are familiar with that sender's email address. And if it's not an email address that you're familiar with, it's not one you've seen, maybe it's their email address, but it's at yahoo.com or it's at, you know, AOL or whatever, um, you're going to want to pick up the phone and call them or take a photo of it and send it to them and say, hey, did you actually send this? Do not forward it because they might click on the links themselves. So that is not guidance that we would want to give, but take a photo of it or call and say, hey, did you actually send this? Is this from you? I haven't emailed with you from this account before. If, if it's just even a little bit off, um, or if it just seems a little suspicious, if they're asking you for information they don't usually ask for, if they're wanting to know a specific scheduling piece or anything like that, um, do, just don't take any sort of risk. And they might say, oh yeah, I am I was just emailing from my phone and that's the account that, you know, but better safe than sorry. Um, the next one is the destination URL. So where is that taking you? You can oftentimes hover over the URL before clicking, making sure that it is where it says it's going. Does it contain an HTTPS certificate? But also, um, if it's just something you don't want to risk at all, what you can do is right click, copy the link, the destination URL 
open an incognito window or open a document and paste it and make sure that um, it is exactly what it says it is. But definitely look at that from a private incognito window. So um, you aren't logging, clicking on something when you're logged into your account, because that can also be an entry point for a bad actor. Um, and then third, are the visuals low quality? Are they pixelated? Does it seem a little strange? Does it seem like somebody is sending this and it was like just the logo pasted in the email? Just don't trust anything like that. Yeah. So, so yeah. Re just recapping really quick. Um, who is the sender? Am I familiar with that email address? Where is the destination URL taking me? And are the visuals um, kind of an off quality? Those are great tips. Um, so everybody make sure to have that, that gut check um, before you click on any links um, as you're, you're corresponding with so many people across your campaign. Um, actually, the last thing, and this is kind of a fun one, is we have a phishing quiz we've developed. Um, to your point, because campaign staffers and cam candidates and anybody really in this space receives so many emails and we uh, now in this like environment are doing so much of our work online as we just talked about um we have created this phishing quiz we strongly recommend people take it it shows a lot of really good examples of phishing that we are seeing across the web um mm -hmm. and it'll show you how to spot it how to identify it it's really fun it's engaging and it's something you can share within your organization, within amongst your colleagues. Um, just remind them that really even the savviest user can be fished. So, sorry, last thing. Yeah, and real quick on that note too, when you receive an email that you suspect to be phishing um, and you're smart enough not to click the link, should you report that as spam or take any additional steps to let yeah. Google know? Okay. For sure. Um, I would say if you have identified that it's spam, it's from the wrong email address, it's from somebody who's impersonating. We have a mechanism for people to report. Um, and let me just drop that link here. Um, here we go. But the biggest thing is, um, here we go. Um, pulling it up. But um, the other thing is, if that happens, please reach out to us, reach out to Maureen, reach out. Oh. Looks like I lost her, but um, hopefully y'all can still see me. And I would say the first thing, yes, report it, but also flag it for us. Um, hey, Maureen. Right, uh, sorry, I, I disappeared for a second. <laughs> but I was just letting the audience know that we are really here as a resource. So should they get anything that is identified as phishing or they're wondering if it's phishing or it's a little suspicious, please share it with our alias. So that's civics-outreach at google.com. Um, but also, Maureen, if you're okay, I would hope that they would flag it for you and you can share it with us as well. Yeah, absolutely. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, that's a great reminder that if you have follow-up questions from this conversation, maybe you're watching it after the fact and you aren't able to drop in a question right now, please let us know. We'd be happy to pass that along, keep the conversation going well past today um, with Google as well. Definitely. So, um, you know, we've talked about so many different ways of safeguarding candidate information. I, I, just to sort of close that loop, is there anything we haven't talked about yet we don't even realize is a, is a mechanism for safeguarding that information? Yeah, I would say if, if you're asking, um, I would say securing your two-step verification. That is the number one thing. You, making sure you have two-step verification on is the biggest piece of advice that I can give to anybody in really any space, especially um, elections and election related political civic um, activity. So within with a Google account, you can choose your level of account security with easy controls. 
passwords are really just that first line of defense, but two-step verification um, provides the extra layer of security that is so essential. Um, so just delving into what two-step verification is, because a lot of times people aren't familiar with it, which it's very important. It's a form of strong authentication. It requires more than just your username, more than just a strong password to sign in your to your account. That's a six digit code sent to your phone, um, a push notification from an authenticator app. Google has one, Microsoft has one. Um, we know Facebook has their level of two-factor authentication. Um, I will say recently we've seen attackers be able to intercept. They become more sophisticated and they're intercepting these codes in an attempt to fish users. So what we really suggest, the strongest form of two-step verification, if you feel like you are a highly targeted in individual, is going to be that physical security key. And that's what I mentioned earlier um, as part of the advanced protection program. So just if you will humor me, I'd like to give this group an, a rundown. I'm, it is a physical key, so it makes things um, even more secure, but it's also um, something that is, you know, with extra layer comes like a little bit of an extra um, step. So it's not for everybody, but if you do feel like you are highly targeted, um, it is unfishable technology. So if an attacker gets your password, intercepts your two-step verification, two verification code, they'll still need that physical security key. And this is what um, mine looks like here. Um, so, and then I have a little adapter for a USB-C, but um, they will need that to access your Google account. So even if you are, you do fall prey to an excellent phishing scam, you do enter your data on a fake sign-in page, your username, your password, without that physical security key, your information will not be transmitted. So you will not be able to um, send that information to any anywhere unless you have a physical security key. So. Um, you you can purchase one like ours through the Titan. It's um, it's a Titan security key through the store. We also have you might be eligible for a free Titan security key through our partnership with Defending Digital Campaigns. Um, that's for eligible campaigns. If you are interested, please reach out to Maureen, myself. We would love to um, provide you with either a code for a security key or let you know um, how you can get one. But do not let the cost be the barrier to entry there if it's something that you feel is especially relevant for you. Absolutely. And I think, you know, don't let sort of being intimidated by this new technology scare you either, right? Like we've adapted so quickly to using these cloud-based collaborative tools, um, to using, you know, so many different forms of communication. I think this is an essential step in the process, you know, as you're shoring up your campaign. And that's also, you know, in a lot of cases, what your staff is for. So if you want to, you know, refer them and you know, get it set up. And I think it's, it's worthwhile and it's a real insurance policy um, for your information. So that's, that's going to bring a lot of peace of mind. Again, as Erica said, if you would like um, to participate in, in this, you know, form of protection and, and to get a security key, please reach out to WPLN. We will connect you um, and where we want to get as many of those out to campaigns as possible. Um, so, you know, a lot of the women in our network have families as well. This is never, you know, women never do this in a bubble um, running for office. So what are some ways that they can ensure their loved ones are also being, you know, precautious? Um, and, and, you know, is it something where we shouldn't be sharing as much as families as we do? Or are there certain tools or avenues um, by which we can be safer as a family online? Yeah, I would say um, it, it starts and ends with creating a culture of security. So not putting things in writing that can Otherwise, if it's your family, it's a friend, pick up the phone and say it. If it would be potentially damaging to you, don't email it. Don't text it. If you want to use, there's like Signal and Wicker. There's like encrypted um, apps that 
um, you, you can use to communicate as a family. And that's with disappearing messages and all of that. Um, and encrypted communication is essential, I would say, if you are talking about especially sensitive information. Um, but it is really creating that culture of security. You, you are only as strong as the weakest person that you are communicating with online. So um, that is making sure that you're not only you, but your colleagues, your networks, your fan, friends, your family are also doing that security checkup. Um, they are also enrolled in the advanced protection program. If you're talking to them on a daily basis um, or you're emailing especially sensitive information. Um, and then we also have a opt-in form. So it's added security for the election season. And I'm just gonna drop that link in here as well. Um, so, so um, that's really just to take your account security to the next level. And it's a tailored security offering for political organizations. So it's different from the advanced protection program. And we recommend enrolling with it in conjunction. If it's not a one or the other situation. Um, Google accounts that are used for election related activity or are communicating with people who do. So that's your vendors, again, your families. Um, th those accounts really do face incredibly specific threats right now. So you can request additional protections that are tailored to this space from Google using the form at the link. Um, and with your consent, these requested accounts will receive additional security checks for active threats, suspicious activity, um, hacking, phishing, malware, or anything like that. Um, and Google will also, it's, it's continuously evolving using machine learning and um, all of the different um, resources and tools we have at our disposal. Sorry, my, my whole apartment is Internet of Things and my Google home was just set off. But, um, but Google, it will also tailor special protections to address um, these specific threats. So that's great. Yeah. So how can you hear it's talking to me, but I have it at a low volume. So hopefully the audio didn't pick it up. No, no, it's, that's so funny that um, that's happening. That happens with me and my devices as well all the time. Um, so everyone take a look at that enhanced security link. Um, and candidates specifically, and I saw we had one in the comments asking, hey, I've got an active campaign account um, and I want to implement the security key. Um, Kathy, we are going to have um, our colleague drop in an email for WPLN. You can shoot us an email and we will connect you with Erica to make sure that you get a code where you can redeem the security key for your campaign. Um, so anybody else, uh, take a look at the enhanced security link that was just dropped. And um, if you are that candidate or you are that particularly vulnerable individual online, um, you know, let's take steps beyond that as well. Um, one other audience question that's come in um, is what are some ways for a candidate or staffer to keep their info safe if they lose um, a device, right? A computer or a phone. And I think this also ties into the two factor authentication. What happens if you're missing one of those factors or, um, you know, sort of the, the hopeful situation that we're, we're not finding ourselves in. Totally. It's a great question. And it's actually, um, one of the most important things that you can do. So I would say, um, Starting from the beginning, let's say you lose your phone, you lose your tablet, your laptop. Um, the first thing is doing a security checkup. And from the security checkup, you can log out of anywhere. So that's you go, not even a lost iPhone or, or lost phone or laptop. That's if you logged into your YouTube at a friend's house or you logged in um, to print something at a business center and you forgot to log out. Anything like that, you can see where you're logged in. You got a new phone and your old phone is sitting in a drawer somewhere. You don't even know what happened to it. And you're still logged in there. Anywhere that you are not actively using today, tomorrow, this week, um, 100% log out. And that way, nobody can get access to your personal email address um, or your information. 
Um, the second is having a backup physical security key. So making sure that you have, um, if you're using like a Bluetooth one, we have a ton of different options, but um, making sure you always have that backup physical security key and you have like two or three enrolled in your, um, in your accounts because you can have as many security keys tied to one account as you want. You can also have multiple accounts tied to one as security key. So you can have the same security key for your Twitter, for your email, for your bank, um, all of that. So the other thing is you can have, um, yeah, multiple keys for one account. So you, and label them. So if you lose a key and you, you know that you lost it, unenroll it, keep your other two. If you go to find your key, you find you see it's no longer there. It was in a drawer you thought, and it's not there. Unenroll it and roll a new one. Um, that is the number one piece of advice as far as physical security keys go. Um, and then just while we're on this topic, and it's not about losing a phone or a laptop, but it is about keeping um, your data safe. And that's making sure that all of the apps that you have given access to, which you can see in that security checkup, are apps that you're familiar with and that you're using. So mm -hmm. let's say you used your Gmail to, um, you got the app for the local like coffee shop in your neighborhood that you used to live in. You no longer live there. You don't use that coffee shop. Um, delete the app because that is a very easy access point for if a bad actor. If it's not, not, if it can't be backed up or it's something, um, to, am I freezing up? You're Sorry. okay. Um, if it can't be backed up, so it's no, it's low, it's out of date, or um, it is not an app that you are actively using, delete it from your phone. Um, I know that's not, that's beyond the answer to the question, but it's also a really essential piece of advice that you don't want things running on your hardware that are not things that you are using on a daily or weekly basis. Absolutely. I mean, I, I was a former campaign staffer um, before working at WPLN and I recently got a new phone and I decided to sort of downsize my phone, um, which was great, but there were so many things, remnants of, you know, some were political organi organizing apps. Um, some were those old neighborhood, you know, shout out to Boston, Massachusetts, where I haven't yeah. lived for a few years. Um, and it was a great like exercise in cleaning house. So, um, you know, just in the, in the saving yourself some mental heartache to like go through, clean it out, do the security checkup. Um, these are all great regular ways to just be aware of where your information is generally as well. Yeah. And I would say, you, I mean, you law, you sign up for um, an account online. I mean, I have so many across the internet. Most people have like 50 or 60. Um, and to save time, you're like, yeah, just use my Google or just use my Facebook login. And you are you don't know that in doing that, you are, and it's quick, right? We all want to save time. We all want to be efficient and maximize our time. So you're like, yes, you can have access to my contacts, my location, my calendar, my drive. And you're like giving it carte blanche. Um, I know I'm very guilty of that in the past. So, and it's a very easy entry point. So if you don't recognize the um, third party app, you don't recognize, or you know that you're no longer using that service, um, unenroll. And that's, you can do that all from security checkup. That's great. Um, well, I'm not seeing any more questions right now. So sort of, you know, last call um, from the audience questions, but I just want to say, you know, while we'll see if any more come in, um, thank you so much. I feel like this has been great conversation. Um, a good mix of the technical and the very practical. I hope everyone sort of has a sense of what these steps look like or um, is is reminded of their own activity online and more aware of it going forward. Uh, you can always refer back to this conversation. We'll make sure it's up on YouTube and it'll stay up on our Facebook page. Um, but we're also engaging Google you know, for the rest of this year and going forward in sharing this information with more folks too. So um, as you are sitting across the kitchen table from these women that are going to be running for office this year, um, remind them 
that security is a really important aspect of their campaign um, and to incorporate some of these best practices into what they're doing. So um, any parting thoughts, Erica? No, just thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to start this partnership with y'all and see where it goes. This is such an important audience and I thank everybody for joining. Um, I would say that women are incredibly underrepresented in elected office across the board, especially within the Republican party, or I think I'm not allowed to say that. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, we're, we serve any woman in the center or on the right. Yeah, right. I'm, I just remembered. But um, it, it's incredibly important. Women across the board in elected office. Um, I'm so excited to be talking with Maureen. And um, thank you again. And we just want to make sure everybody is secure, protected. Um, nobody's data gets leaked or breached in any capacity this election cycle or any moving forward. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you all. Um, for those of you who tuned in, dropped in comments, for those of you who will be watching this later. Um, so please feel free to reach out. We've dropped a lot of resources in the chat. Refer to those and also reach out to the WPLN team anytime or the Google team with questions and to loop yourself um, into these, these opportunities to secure yourself and your campaign online. All right. Um, thank you. And remember to, if you are seeing us for the first time, like our page, follow for more live updates. We'll be having more conversations in the future. Thank you so much, Erica.